Good morning everybody, it is Thursday the 29th of June today and welcome back to the farm. So we did wake up yesterday with another nice little 11 millimetres of rain in the gauge which is very nice to see and that takes us to pretty much smack bang on average rainfall for the month of June and I think when I was looking at the chart this morning I reckon we were above average for May in the end it all came in the last week but we still uh, yeah on what's forecast to tend to a very dry spring we want every drop of moisture we can get now for that time of the year but at the moment it is a little wet a little sloppy a little cold you know there's not going to be a lot going out on out in the paddock and uh, we've only got maybe two three tank fulls of grass free chemical to go out into the paddocks anyway, so hopefully we'll have that tidied up uh, here in the next few days once we can get back out there, but things are definitely starting to slow down out in the paddock. All the sheep are gone from here, they're all back out on pasture, uh, they're going to start lambing in about a month. Once we finish grass freeing, then it's, we'll be playing the waiting game till we start spraying broadleafs out of the wheat and barley and stuff like that. So what does that mean? Well, when things slow down out in the paddock, they speed up in the shed. And there's plenty of things for me to catch up on in here, I can tell you that. <laughs> Now what you guys are looking at here is the most used and the most neglected piece of equipment on this farm. So if you've been watching the channel, it was probably late last year sometime I serviced this thing. These tie rod joints just down here were absolutely stuffed. I'll, we'll, I'll show you. The dust boot's gone missing off here, the dirt's got in there, this steering cylinder is leaking. So it's been leaking oil out and that made the dust boot split and so the whole thing's a mess and it just needs to be fixed. So what we're going to try and do is get those tie rods changed and get that steering cylinder resealed. Now the steering cylinder I have no idea how to fix so we're just going to have a go at it. I've got a seal kit for it, we'll see whether we can get it fixed. Probably should have a look at my parts and make sure they're right before I go too far. Because knowing my luck, that would be wrong. Well, blow me down. Even the parts look right. I guess I got no excuses now. Oh. That wasn't actually too bad. Did have to make a bit of a homemade tool there though. I found this really old spanner and I just ground him down on the end to get into there because nothing else fits. Woohoo! That's one. One down, one to go. And then the steering cylinder. That's going to be the hard part I reckon. Now I've got that, both those tyre rods off and there is trouble in paradise. There's just the slightest bit of pitting on the end of this shaft here, this steering cylinder, and that's maybe why this side is leaking, I don't know, but it is literally, you have to be on complete full lock to have that go under the seal. So you remember at the start of the video and I said that this is the most used and neglected piece of equipment. Well, because it's the most used, I think we're just gonna try and chuck that seal kit in there and we'll just see how it goes. I, I, I don't think it'll, I think it'll start leaking again down the track, but you know, we'll just deal with it then. A new cylinder, I reckon, I think I got it quoted up because when we were talking about doing the seal kit in here, I thought, why don't we just get a new cylinder maybe because resealing hydraulic cylinders can be a bit iffy sometimes. I think it was about three grand. So anyway, the seal kit was like 200 bucks. We'll throw it in there. 
see what we can do. But I am a, I am a mechanic by trade, but I'm not good with hydraulics because I've never done much with hydraulics. So I'm going to try and teach myself something today. <laughs> Who knows what else we'll find in here anyway, maybe uh, we'll find something no good and we've got to replace this cylinder anyway, but we'll, f we'll have a look. You, yeah. holy smokes that thing has been killing me. That took me a long time to get that out. I have no idea how I figured out how to get that out, but I I did. So there you go. Wowee. It's one of those things that uh, after you've done it once, it just is easier the next time, but I can't see myself rebuilding too many 6510 steering cylinders in the future, so. It's all part of the excitement. Now this will be interesting to see whether the parts are actually correct. So I don't know guys, I am actually super stoked with how this has gone so far. I mean, I, like I said, not much of a hydraulics man and I'm just uh, having a red hot crack and well, we're going back together, so that's good. I think I've just got to put a couple of circlips back on here and then, uh, yeah, I'll reattach the hoses and we'll give it a go and make sure it's not leaking. This was one of the worst circlips I've ever had to get out because there's no way of really getting it out other than sticking your screwdriver in there and it so turns out that putting it back on ain't a lot of fun either. Alright, uh, hydraulic hoses are on, our cylinder is resealed, so I reckon we'll kick this in the guts, make sure it's working, make sure there's no oil pouring out anywhere, and then tie rods can go on and wheels can go back on, job done. Tie rod time. Wow, those steering joints feel a little bit tighter. Yeah, yeah, if you just want to grab those two spanners again, we'll have to go down under there. Yeah. And hold and then I'll try and tighten the other side. Have you got it up against the axle or something? Or? No, no, at the moment, but I've got two wrenches on it, so. Let me know if I'm going too hard. Turn it up a bit more. Yeah, the grunt there. Probably go as hard as you like, unless it actually lets go. Oh, no, that should be all right, I think. Unless you want to push rather than pull. I don't mind. Right. Whatever we got to do. 
settlement on this place is a long one. It's not for 90 days. Oh, okay. Not bad, not bad for a day's work. Morning. Well, it was very wintry out here this morning. There was a heavy fog. There's a couple of more mill in the gauge this morning. So, hey, like I always say, we'll take it. What sort of mechanic doesn't check his workmanship? Ah, that didn't work, did it? So to bring you guys up to speed, I think it was the last episode I was trying to, I was looking at this broken bolt. The mirror arm had been tapping away here on the exhaust. I was gonna put a new bolt in the arm and I found out that we had a broken bolt in here. And I thought, well, while I'm doing loader work, I'm gonna try and fix it. Well, I pulled the mirror arm off and I tried to drill into the bolt and the bolt must be stainless or something like that. And I couldn't drill into it. So I thought I weld a nut on there. I tried to do that twice, just it broke off both times. And that's when I remembered, that's when I remembered that I have these diamond ground titanium carbide tip drill bits and they would drill into that bolt. So I've got a hole in there. I've got my easy out. Let's see how we go. Oh, you're gonna come out, aren't you? No, no, oh, you're kidding me. What do you do when the easy out breaks in there? <laughs> That was turning too, why did it break? Why? So I don't know what to tell you guys other than it's fixed. It's fixed, I've done it. That was an absolute nightmare. This has taken me hours <laughs> get this out. But it's done. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say other than I was just so sufficiently frustrated and annoyed that I just turned the camera off. I didn't turn it back on, but Look at that, we got two bolts in there now. That is no longer tapping away on the exhaust there. The exhaust stack's nice and tight. That is wicked. Boy, oh boy, am I happy that's done. But anyway, I'm gonna go get myself something to eat and then, um, yeah, we got an auction to go to this afternoon. So we're gonna go do that. Are you nervous? <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky one you got there. Um, am I nervous? No, I'm excited. <laughs> Are you nervous? Whoa! Um, nah, not at all. No, I'm excited. I've got no idea what to expect. Nah, no, me either. It's not a magnet? No. No, no, <laughs> we're not magnets. We'll get a photo of you sticking well, it on. Well, congrats to yeah, you too. Thanks. That's cool. Yeah. To get it on. Here you go, Stace, right behind us. <laughs> Didn't do a very good job. Ah, that's alright. Part, part, partly look. Yeah. There that's you. a bit yeah. better. <laughs> It's a bit wrinkled, but so oh, am I. Don't worry about it. But so am I. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh well, congratulations. Commiserations, all in one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all part of it, as far as I know. Oh, all this? Yeah. Ah. Oh. So it's about almost 100 acres here. So it's a weird, funny little fenced off paddock though, so could you just open that up? Yeah, yeah, we just take the fences out. And just crop it as one big paddock? Yeah. So there's no neighbours because this is the uh, road here that goes around. So yeah guys, there you go. Uh, Graham just bought another block of land. The sign says it all on there. Uh, I think it's, it says 90, it's just shy of 100 acres of land. There's a house. There is some old, there is an old house on there and some pretty crappy old sheds as well. But uh, yeah. Another hundred acres of nice flat arable country here and a house that and a, needs and a some renovation work. project. <laughs>
was a lovely Friday to spend some money today, guys. But I think that's about all I got for you guys for this episode, if I can spit out my words. So, anyway, nice to add another 80, 90 acres, nice flat arable country to the farm. Uh, it's about 10 k's away to the west, so it's not quite as good a country as here at home. Probably not quite as bad as Bilele, maybe. Rainfall drops off a little bit that way. Um, the soils might not be quite as good as what they are here either. So, anyway, like I said, nice little addition. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you in the next one. Have a good one.